Let's switch it up. <laughs> hey, hey, Coach. Uh, I'm curious, after watching the Game 2 film, uh, what are the things that you liked that you're obviously going to try to duplicate? What are the things that you're worried about, uh, you know, creeping back up from Game 1 or things you didn't like in Game 2 that you don't want happening in 3 or 4 down the road? Yeah, I mean, the, the three-point line is, is still a major concern. Uh, obviously, they made 19 game one. They made 16 in game two. Uh, and Dame had nine of those. Obviously, the uh, that second quarter, uh, he put on a show and showcased why he's one of the best guards in the, uh, in the NBA. So three-point defense remains a concern. That's a huge part of what they do. Uh, we have to have greater awareness, pick up points, not being caught down the floor. Uh, second half, he only had one May three. Uh, so, you know, wasn't everybody saying it was just Aaron Gordon. Aaron did a really good job. Um, but I think two other things played into it. Think our bigs provided the help. You know, I heard Dame say after the game, um, it wasn't, he wasn't just playing against Aaron Gordon. You know, we're giving uh, Dame a, little, a ton of attention, rightfully so. And also, I, I think, you know, he's a superbly conditioned athlete, but he played 42 minutes. And I'm sure he probably got a little bit tired. He, he was doing so much for their team. Uh, the turnovers, we didn't turn the ball over a lot. You know, we had 29 assists, only 13 turnovers, which is a great number. But we allowed them to score 21 points off those turnovers. So uh, we, we have to make sure we're not fueling their break, giving them easy points, especially on the road in a hostile environment. Um, but, you know, we were much better in the energy areas, the hustle stats, uh, the number of contests, loose balls, the deflections, all those types of numbers. I thought we had a much more physical disposition than we had in game one. And uh, I think as, as well as we played in game two, for us to come in here and try to get game three, we'll have to play even better. Kyle Fredrickson, Denver Post. Hey, Michael, uh, just a quick one for me on Jamal. Uh, the past couple playoff games, before the game, we've seen him take some warm-up shots without jumping on the floor. You know, just one month after surgery, I'm, I'm no doctor, but it seems like, you know, he's really progressing well or and is intent on, on getting better. Just what, what, what have you seen in his rehab so far? Yeah, I mean, he's questionable for tomorrow night. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see where it's at. Um, no, I, I'd say it was great having him around the team. Uh, you know, his energy, his presence, his positivity is really impactful. And you have to rem remind yourselves that, okay, Jamal's not playing. Monte is still a really young player in terms of NBA experience, but Faku is a rookie. Marcus Howard is a rookie. Shaq Harrison has played in the NBA, but these are his first playoff games that he's playing. So uh, a guy like Jamal who has um, 33 games of playoff experience at a high level, um, he can also be impactful in terms of helping those guys with what they're facing on the court on offense and on defense. So uh, he's progressing nicely. Obviously, it's a long road ahead of him, um, but I just love having him around the team as much as possible. Vinny Benedetto, Denver Gazette. Hey, Michael, last week it sounded like Will was kind of on the verge of returning, but I saw again he's out for game three. I guess, is this situation complicated by the fact that, you know, in a playoff series, it, it's tougher to kind of work a guy back in and it's harder to find, you know, 10 minutes to give a guy like Will? Yeah, I mean, Yes and no. Uh, you know, I'm just waiting for the green light. You know, if I get that green light from my training staff, you know, uh, that's a problem. I welcome trying to, you know, figure out getting Will Barton some minutes. Um, every day he's on the court, every day like he just was, he looks better and better, more comfortable, and more importantly, more confident in the injury that he's recovering from. Uh, and I think that's what it's going to come down to, you know, just the confidence level that Will has in terms of going out there and pushing that hamstring uh, that he injured in Golden State or, or probably about a month ago. Um, if, if Steve Short and the training staff say, hey, Will's a go and he can play these many minutes, you know, uh, you know, Will's a starter for us, you know, and we, we would definitely find a way to get him in the game. Matt Schubert, Denver Post. Hi, Mike. Uh, Matt Schubert here, uh, standing in for Mike Finger today. Uh, got a question out of left field for you. Um, Nikola Jokic, uh, he uh, had come to you um, asking to be taken out of the starting lineup five years ago uh, because uh, Nurkic was on the team and things weren't quite working out. Uh, I was wondering what was said in that conversation and, and what was the tone of it? Uh, and, and what do you think that ended up having uh, 
the effect on the franchise it had? Well, I think the effects speak for themselves. Uh, you know, since that point in time, uh, our team has taken off. Uh, Nikola Jokic has become an MVP. Uh, we're the only team in the West to have home court advantage three years in a row. Um, and we've advanced out of the first round two years in a row, something that hasn't happened in a long time in Denver. So uh, those are the effects. Uh, the tone of the conversation uh, was basically um, he, he was frustrated, uh, did not think uh, the pairing of he and Nurkic was going well, but more importantly, it wasn't helping the team. It wasn't just about Nicola and Nurk. It was more about it's not helping our team. And that's what you love about Nicola. It's never about him. It's always about the collective good. And uh, it also speaks to his being a selfless superstar. You know, at that point in time, he was on his ascension to becoming an MVP player. Um, but he was willing to say, man, take me out of the lineup, start somebody else. Let me come off the bench. Let me play my game. Um, and you know, soon thereafter, we made the decision to make Nicola a starting center. And uh, we haven't looked back since. Chris Dempsey, Altitude Sports. Hey, Coach, you know, what changed for the bench um, from game one to game two? Uh, obviously, more scoring there. And then, and then I, how do you just bottle that up and make sure it stays consistent for the rest of the series? Yeah, I mean, the, the bench made shots. You know, I, I think uh, everybody's talking about their productivity. Uh, we have scored the bench 38 to 21 in game two. Um, but I also think, Chris, that our bench also defended much better. And you go back to game one, everybody talks about Dame and CJ. I, I thought the guys that won them the game in game one were Carmelo Anthony and Anthony Simons. And I know I talk about it all the time, but those guys were 8 of 13 from three. Uh, so we defended their bench much better into the game. Uh, and then you had guys like Monte Morris, who played at a really high level, uh, got him up to 30 minutes. He closed the game for us. Uh, Paul Millsap in 15 minutes put on a show. Uh, Michael Porter with that second unit gave you a go-to player. Uh, Jermichael Green sent so many things that may not show up in the stat sheets. Uh, flashing high-low to get Paul Millsap a layup. Setting great screens to get his teammates open. Playing really good defense. So uh, that second unit just brought the energy. Um, and then they played at a high level on both ends. Uh, and, and that was the best part about it. It wasn't just offense. It was a defense that led to the offense. Joel Rush, Forbes. Hey, Coach. I kind of wanted to ask you about your experience as a coach in this series. Um, obviously, you wish you had a healthy roster. and But you've talked about the unconventionality of playing some two-way players and things. And just as a coach, is there – I mean, of course you want Jamal healthy and everybody healthy, but is there also a part of you that kind of appreciates or is excited about the challenge of having to be more creative and improvisational in this series? Well, I think we've been doing that, to be honest with you, Joel. I don't think it really started in this series. You know, uh, Jamal Murray went down on April 12th in San Francisco. Uh, two nights later, literally, Monte Morris went down. A week later, Will went down and the PJ went down. So uh, we finished the season 13-5 and five, uh, after that Golden State loss. And I think in that time, you've seen a lot of uh, creativity and being uh, and, and imp improvising, if you will. Uh, obviously, in the playoffs, you're playing now the same opponent, and you have to get a little bit more creative. You have to make your adjustments. But um, I would love to be fully healthy, to your point. But I would agree, when you're playing with guys that, you know, just you, I had no idea would be playing for us in the postseason when we started this year. Uh, it makes it a little bit more fun. Uh, and, and it really, I mean, the way I look at it, there's not any pressure on us. You know, we're just going out there and play, playing our game, having fun, and giving guys opportunities that, most importantly, are seizing those opportunities. Shaq Harrison helped us win game two. Marcus Harris has been really good in two, in two playoff games. Faku's a rookie. I mean, he's starting against, you know, a, a Hall of Fame player in Damian Lillard. So embrace the moment and uh, just continue to go out there, play hard, have fun, and play for each other. James Hill, BNC Sports. Hey, Coach, congratulations on all your success. Uh, at this point in the series, uh, it's, it's going to be the best uh, three out of five. Uh, when you look at this series, uh, what are your impressions so far? Well, I mean, we, we knew going in that this was going to be a tremendous challenge. 
uh, you're playing a, against a team filled with playoff veterans, lots of experience, lots of talent. Um, obviously, you know, we, we would love to have come here being up 2-0, uh, but I was just really proud of how we responded from game one uh, with our discipline, with our energy, with our physicality. And the reality is this, you know, we're coming into a really tough place to play. I believe they've upped their fan attendance to 10,000. Uh, I think Ball Arena just announced the same thing. Uh, so we'll have to be even better than we were in game two to give ourselves a chance tomorrow night. Uh, like I said, this team is battle tested and one of the more dangerous backcourts in the NBA, whether it's Chris Paul and Devin Booker, whether it's Bradley Beal or Russell Westbrook, whether it's CJ McCollum or Damon Little, th these guys are uh, just a terrific, terrific backcourt. And uh, they put so much pressure on you. But, uh, you know, it's 1-1, you know, so we're still alive. We're battling and uh, looking forward to a great game tomorrow night. All right, Coach, we got time for one more. We're going to end with Ryan Blackburn from Denver Stiffs. Coach, it feels like most of this series, the the pivot point has for both teams has been the Blazers' decision not to double Nikola Jokic when he has the ball. What did that change for you guys initially, if anything? And and what does Nikola have to do? Uh, just like how much more can he do to actually force doubles in, in that situation with as well as he's playing individually right now? Well, it wasn't surprising. You know, they didn't double Nikola all regular season. You know, so they have two uh, able-bodied bigs and Yusuf Nurkic and Ennis Cantor that are big, strong, physical. And, you know, that, that's their game plan. And, you know, they won game one with that. And, you know, their players were talking about how that was the plan to let him score. You know, he had one assist. I think what they forgot to mention was in order for you to get an assist, you have to make a shot. And on passes out of the post in game one, we were one for 10. Um, that's why I thought it was somewhat of a ridiculous narrative going into game two. Uh, you know, Nicole goes out and gets 38, eight and five in game two. So could they double them? Could they show more of a crowd? The good thing about Nicola is in his 33 playoff games, he's been the focal point for quite a few years now. We've seen every double team uh, imaginable. He's comfortable with that. And now that makes him into a playmaker. And now the other guys have to step up and make plays behind that. But um, I guess, you know, the playoffs are always a game of adjustments. So we'll see early tomorrow night if one of their adjustments is to give help and double. And if they do, uh, we'll be ready and we have to attack it and make open shots. All right, that'll do it. Thank you, coach. Thank you.